Hello everyone, welcome to another video tutorial for Hammer. At Hammer, our goal is to produce an extremely adaptive flight automation platform for the commercial drone industry. In this video, we're going to look at how we can use Hammer to create different types of flight plans for 3D models, specifically 3D models for vertical structures, certain, such as towers, pylons, uh, anything, that else, anything else that fits the, that geometry. So let's jump right in. So one of the first things we need to do to be able to create a flight plan is to indicate on the map what type of tower, what, which tower we'd like to we'd like to map. Um, in this particular, for the purpose of the video, I've already got a tower centered on my map. But if you'd want to, if you want to locate your tower and you've got the location for it, uh, all you need to do is first go into the settings menu and change the map location to um, any any coordinates that you would like. So if you change those coordinates. Uh, or if you search for pressing that search button, if you search for uh, any tower that you'd like to survey, you can basically bring that up uh, by a simple search. So I'm gonna go back to the map. Um, so I've, I've got my tower, I've got my map centered on my tower, and I'd like to go ahead and start building a flight plan for this. So one of the first things you need to do is really just uh, to drop a points on the map. Uh, so to do that, we will first go into the mission view. So if you tap on the top left, top right button. Uh, over there and you it'll bring up a screen showing all the types of um, missions that are available in hammer and then once you've got that we choose the tower mission module because that's basically what we want to do so if you tap on that uh, hammer's going to ask us to tap on the target object sensor so essentially the target object being the structure we'd like to survey um, and in our case would be this particular tower so we would want to tap as precisely as possible um, and once you've done that, Hammer will generate an initial flight plan. Uh, once you've done that, we tap OK. Uh, by the way, this isn't the only way of importing um, the point because this point might be something that you already have as coordinates and you might want to import that into Hammer. So to do that, you can go into the settings menu over here and you can basically scroll all the way down and import a KML file. Now this KML file consists of a point uh, that will be imported into Hammer and a default plan as you see over here will be generated So going back to our mission So one of the things to also bear into mind is that this mission is only a rough plan for what the drone will fly in the field What we really want to get to is that this particular Point is as centered on the tower as possible and the circle and the the flight path are actually as accurate as possible but we'll get to that in a minute I think once we finish talking about the settings of the mission I'm going to talk you through how you can actually use the drone as a as a measurement instrument almost to make sure that your, your your mission is as precise as possible for both collecting the right amount of data and also to make sure that the flight is as safe as possible so let's go ahead and configure that mission uh, one of the things I already noticed is that that center is not quite the center of this uh, of this of the tower on the map. And I know that the Google Maps or satellite imagery is only meter level accurate, but what I'd like to demonstrate over here is that you can move the entire flight plan quite easily. So if you look if you look at that uh, magic wand tool over there on the top right corner, if you tap that, you've got the you've got the drag um, tool uh, second from the right. If you tap on that tool that's going to change the gear icon to a drag icon and then you can just hold down and and move the entire mission as you like so that you can position uh, much more accurately what we're trying to position here is essentially the white points right next to the orange one and once you've got got it in the center then then and that's basically it so that's just a little demo of, of how you can actually move the entire flight plan but uh, let's jump right ahead. So this next thing to do after you've got the initial plan is to configure the plan. So for that, you tap on the, the white button that you see over here, the white gear, and that's gonna open a settings menu. So adjusting the map so that we can see all of it. Now we go into the menu and we look at, there are a number of different options that we can configure. So first and foremost, um, it's the camera type. So this is quite important because it allows us to calculate um, correctly where the pictures need to be taken based on the focal length of the sensor and other parameters, for instance, the field of view or the sensor width, height, and so on and so forth. So if we, if we just go into that setting and change that to the camera type that we would actually be flying, that would allow us to generate a flight plan beforehand that fits that 
profile. So we've got a range of cameras over here, but I would I would suggest choosing something that uh, choosing basically the one you'd be flying with. Uh, for this particular flight, let's just go for the Phantom 4 Pro. There we go. So we've got the camera, um, and that's set. And the next setting we've got is the flight mode. So there are two main flight modes. There's the circles or the up and down. And the main difference behind them is essentially the way the drone flies around the tower. So if you've got a circles flight mode, what the drone is going to do is that it's going to fly uh, one circle around the tower, reduce in height, fly another circle around the tower, again, reduce height and carry on, so on and so forth. Um, that's for the circles flight mode. Uh, and there's another flight mode called the up and down flight mode. So in the up and down flight mode, the drone would essentially start at a point, uh, go down all the way to the minimum altitude, um, translate, go up to the maximum altitude, translate again, go down to the minimum altitude, uh, translate, and so on and so forth as it would carry on forming a big circle around the tower. Now, what's the difference between the two flight modes and when to use which? So the circles flight mode, as the name implies, does circles, um, uh, multiple circles around the f around the structure and uh, it's best to use this when the circular profile of the structure is wider than it's taller meaning that if you have a, a structure that that is uh, you know a, a lot wider it, it, it would it would be a lot more efficient to cover the width of the structure first and then to cover the height um, Whereas if you've got a structure that is taller than it is wider, which is the case over here, we would want to cover the, the height of the structure before we cover the width, uh, just for efficiency reasons. And that would allow us to use less battery, less flight time, and just have you know, the, same, the, the right amount of precision uh, in the least amount of time, which is, which is our goal here with the, with, with the automation. So for this particular flight, we're gonna go with an up and down flight mode and uh, i hope this is clear if there are any questions please leave leave it in the comments section and we'll be happy to answer them so moving on so the, one of the next things we've got in the settings is the top altitude so this essentially is the top altitude of the of the flight plan so as you know we'll be going up and down and along the tower and what this setting says is what is the maximum altitude relative to the takeoff point that the drone should fly to. Now, it is quite hard to estimate what is the height of this structure from Google Maps itself or from uh, from you know not being on the site. Um, but w the goal here is just to configure a rough setting and to go on site and actually to make this more precise. And I'm gonna get to that, but the idea is to set the maximum altitude or, which should include should include uh, the maximum height of the, well, the height of the tower. So. Let's uh, let's make that something. Let's let's try and guess the height of the tower. Let's say it's, it's somewhere between thirty-five and forty meters. So I'm gonna go in and, and punch in uh, thirty-five meters uh, for this flight. Um, the next setting on the list is the bottom altitude. So as the name implies, it's the minimum altitude of that tower. Um, let's say we we want to go as low as five meters from the ground, from the takeoff level. So this is all assuming that we're gonna be taking off from the ground. As some of you might already know, the DJI altitudes are all relative takeoff points. So if you take off from the um, from the top of the tower or somewhere else which is already at an altitude, it will lead to dramatically different results. So we would, we would recommend taking off from the ground. Um, so, so that's the bottom altitude. Uh, so as the name implies, it's to do with the minimum settings on the um, on the tower, and uh, and let's move on to the next setting. So, we've got the we've we've got the top and bottom altitude configured. Um, on site, what we would want to do is we would want to use these little guys on, on, right next to the settings. So, these drone icons that you see over here essentially are fetches, altitude fetches. The idea is that they can get they will retrieve the current altitude of the drone. So the procedure on the site should be you take your drone, you, you fly it manually to and try to align it with the top of the tower. And once you've got it aligned with the top of the tower, you tap that button. And we're gonna try and tap it right now. And it's gonna tell us that cannot fetch drone altitude, not connected. And that's because we're not connected to the drone at the moment. 
But in principle, the idea is that you'd fly a drone to the top of the tower, you'd tap that button, and you would be able to capture the top altitude of the building. Then you would repeat the same thing by flying the minimum height that you want to fly at, you're comfortable flying in, and you would you would tap that button. And once you tap that button, again, it's going to, in reality, it's going to capture the altitude of the drone, and that way you can configure precisely where the drone is. Moving on, so we've got the object radius. So this setting essentially is asking us uh, what is the 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 radius that of the tower that we want to we want to model. Um, so the best thing to do is to try and fit try and fit the circle to the building. So we can see here that the building is actually um, octagonal uh, in shape. So therefore, a circle is just an approximation, but it's it's not incredibly important to have in, to have a super tight fit as long as the structure has as long as the circle is r relatively close to the uh, to the structure that should that should do it so um, again it's 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 um, something that you would configure before going to the sites but you would adjust it based on the drone so best thing to do is uh, you would you would fly from the sensor uh, you would, you would fly uh, to the radius um, and you would you would fetch that from the drone so this is this is slightly um, counterintuitive the idea here is that what you want to do is you you want to position the drone uh, again on the boundary of the of the structure that you want to model so if you're doing a tower you'd want to position the drone on the edge of the structure and you would hit that button um, which is going to fetch the drone's distance from the sensor that has been configured and therefore configure that as the radius of the tower you want to model um, hopefully that makes sense if you've got any questions regarding that again please leave it in the comment section and we will, we will try to answer that with probably more, with more pictures and visualizations so that's the that's the main idea and the next setting is the flight radius. So that's to do with the distance of this particular circle or oct oct octagon from the center point. So right now the distance, this particular distance is 20 meters. And um, I believe that's a bit too high. Um, um, again, this is just to ensure, just to sort of understand what's a safe um, safe distance to fly at um, because all the overlap calculations will be done automatically so all of the all of these settings are really for safety purposes so if you if you uh, if you believe that 14 meters looks like a safe um, safe circle around the around the structure then then go for that and if you if you want to if you want to go as close as 10 meters uh, then by all means go for, go for that so um, um, we, would, we would advise keeping at least 10 meter distance from the tower again for safety reasons uh, however this is something that you can decide completely um, completely from your um, uh, analysis of the site and the environment so moving on finally we've got the setting of the image overlap so if you'd want to do if you're doing an inspection flight then the overlap can be fairly small so something like 40 to 60 40 to 50 percent for an inspection flight and if you're doing um, somewhat more 3D model type of a flight, then we would advise keeping the overlap 70% or more. So for this particular flight, I'm going to keep the overlap at 80%. And lastly, we've got the gimbal pitch. So the gimbal pitch by default is set to zero degrees, which is essentially the drone would be facing forward all the time, as, as indicated by these arrows, and uh, looking inwards towards the point. But uh, this is something that again can be configured to um, to give the gimbal a slight tilt. So we can we can say minus twenty degrees if you would want the gimbal to have a slight tilt. And this is only if you would want to capture oblique images for for some form of an inspection flight. Um, I do think that keeping it zero degrees for a three D model is the best thing to do. And the last sort of setting is the start point. So as you might notice, there is the start pointer so there's an arrow green arrow pointing to that particular location to start and that's uh, indicating where the drone is going to fly to for the first point and then fly around 
Um, if you're doing a circles flight mode, it's gonna fly down and then fly up, fly down, fly up, all the way around in one circle. So if you move the slider, that's gonna change what point we want to start the flight at. And again, this is purely for safety reasons. It might be that you are you are somewhere somewhere there on the map when you're flying and you'd want to see the drone as it starts its mission, therefore you want to start it there. It might be that it's it's more comfortable for you to take off somewhere there and therefore you'd want to fly from somewhere there. And so this is really just deciding where you'd want to start where you'd want to start the mission so that you can you can see the drone and understand that the safety uh, is not being compromised in any way and everything looks good. So it's just to, to, to give you that sort of um, that configurability of uh, of the mission settings. So that's basically it. Uh, we've configured the tower mapping mission and what we would like to do now is to simulate the mission to check if everything is okay. So we'll just hit that done button there and we will now start the simulator. So for this step, you're gonna make sure that the the uh, the app is not connected to a drone. Um, and once you've made sure of that, you can just tap the play button there and Hammer's gonna ask you, if there's no drone connected, would you like to add a simulated drone? Go ahead and press okay. And then choose the home location or choose the location where you would most likely take off. Again, this is only for simulation purposes. So for this flight, I'm gonna say somewhere there it looks like a path uh, that we might be able to take off from. And as I, as I hit OK, um, you can see the drone flying to the start location. And it's going to, it's basically, it may not be obvious, but what it's doing is that if you notice the, the altitude at every point, it goes down at this point, and then it, and the, and the drone translates, and the altitude goes back up, and the drone moves, and then if you notice the altitude, it goes down again, and then it sort of translates to the next point, and then it goes back up again, and then it moves to the next point, and it goes down. So essentially what the drone is doing is going up and down on every single point and moving along the circle. So it captured the data according to the flight plan that we had configured. Uh, if we had configured a circles flight plan, we would have seen the drone do a circle around and then, and then um, basically go home. So, one of the things that's also quite important to configure before you do the simulation and do the um, do the actual flight is the overall flight settings. So we're going to go ahead and do those settings. So if you tap on the overall flight settings button, um, I'll open up a menu. Um, you've got the map settings, which are not very relevant at the moment, um, but we're going to go into more of the drone and safety settings. The drone type can't be changed because it's simulated at the moment. Uh, this is really purely just an indication of what drone you've got connected at the moment. Uh, it's not really a setting. Uh, but the max drone speed is quite important. So um, this speed is the maximum drone speed. It, it, is, it is always going to be higher than the speed the drone actually flies at. So since this is a tower mapping mission, and 3D modeling mission, a hammer is going to calculate what is the most optimal flight speed and it's never going to be higher than the speed that has been set over here. Uh, how much going to significantly slow down the drone based on the camera trigger interval, the exposure values, shutter intervals, all these parameters and also overlap. Taking all of that into account is going to calculate the, the best flight speed so that the data can be captured in a safe and precise manner. So we're going to reduce this to let's say 10 meters for this flight. Uh, but this is completely up to you. Um, we do think that even if you left the flight speed all the way to 15 meters, hammer will slow it down. So it's not, not, uh, not a, it doesn't make a huge difference. But you, if you would want to have the peace of mind that the drone does not fly more than 10 meters per second, it could be purely because of wind or any any other environmental factor. You can set that over here. And we've got the safety settings. So uh, this is something we have covered in other videos. We basically. Um, we will highlight the go home height because that's quite important for the tower mapping uh, mission. So the idea here is to set a height uh, to which the drone will climb. It will basically then return home. So we would want to do, um, we would we would want to make sure that this height is definitely higher than the height of the tower. If we if we do decrease the height to within 10 meters of the height of the highest height of the tower. We will get a warning which says one or more missions are higher or within 10 meters of the current go home height. So let's keep that to something like 50 meters. And 
uh, that, sh that should be a safe height. Uh, one of the important things to also understand is that during a battery swap, so if the drone runs out of battery during a mission uh, and heads home and sort of, um, let's say the drone ran out of battery over here, and it would, cl it would then climb to the go home height, which is 50 meters, and it's going to fly over the tower uh, close to the home point and it's going to go all the way down to the home points. Now, when you resume the mission, you'd want to make sure the drone does not actually go into the tower when it's trying to reach that point to continue the mission. So for that reason, what Hammer will do when you resume the mission is that it's going to warn you that actually this is a 3D flight and therefore the drone is first going to climb to a go home altitude, um, navigate to the point, lower itself to 35 meters or whatever the altitude, last known altitude was, and then carry on going around the building. So Hammer will do that for you and it will, it will prompt you that the go home height is what the height the drone will climb to when it has to go back to the resume point. But this is important to know and there, because the go home height therefore has to be an obstacle free height where you can freely navigate the drone to, to, the, uh, to the go home position, to the last known position. So that's basically the go home height. Um, what we would want to then configure is the go home battery. So that's typically somewhere between 20 to 30%. Um, you might want to set this to lower uh, in a tower mapping mission because um, the, there's typically you're not too away from the tower so you might want to utilize the battery as much as possible um, and um, yeah that's the percentage at which the drone is going to trigger the go home sequence which is essentially climbing to a high altitude and then returning home so moving on we've got the max altitude so that's essentially a safety setting so you can set that to uh, 120 meters, uh, 200 meters, or all the way to 500 meters, depending on the restrictions in your in your in your country of operation, and also your flying permissions. Uh, same goes to for the flying radius. Uh, you'd ideally want to keep it at uh, up to 500 meters, um, uh, but you can go up to uh, two kilometers, and again, that really depends on your country of operation. Uh, one important thing to bear in mind is that these are maximum altitude and uh, flight radiuses so they are just purely for safety reasons uh, you can configure them to uh, as high as that's possible or as low as possible based on uh, your preference and then we've got certain other settings so we've got the connection loss action um, so that's essentially what you what behavior you'd, you'd expect from the drone in case it loses connection so uh, the default setting is to continue the mission so if it loses connection to the remote controller, it will continue the mission till the battery runs out or the, re the remote controller is reconnected. Um, we would also recommend changing it to hover or to go home based on the safety in, in the environment you're, you're operating in. So you could set it to hover, which would just make the drone stop and you can try to reestablish the connection. Um, I suppose if you're quite close to the tower, you can move and you would, you'd be able to sort of um, get back control. and. Um, that's a potentially good strategy. You also have a go home, so you could uh, initiate a go home sequence. Uh, not really recommended for a tower scenario because um, unless the uh, unless the tower is um, is is quite far, uh, we we do not see the, the the reason to to go into a go home sequence. So we would we would rather go for a continuous mission or a hover. Uh, obviously, this depends on um, your particular environment. So <clears throat> we. After that, we do have a number of other settings, for instance, whether you would like the drone to go home after missions or not. So um, this is, again, subject to the environments you're operating in. One of the things to to bear in mind is that go home after the mission would uh, would, would result in the drone climbing to, um, to the safe altitude and then returning home in a straight line. However, if the drone is within 20 meters from the home location, it will start landing. So this is something that, we, that is inbuilt into the drone in terms of the go home sequence. Um, this is something that DJI has sort of uh, inbuilt and it's probably probably for good reasons. You would wanna make sure that you are at least 20 meters away if, if you turn on this option, otherwise the drone is going to land uh, after finishing the mission. So. Um, and then we've got other sort of settings, uh, obstacle avoidance, it's best to keep that on. The drone will use its proximity sensors in case uh, it goes too close to a, to a surface or a wall and it would stop. Uh, imperial units, so in case you are used to using um, 
uh, feet for height as opposed to meters. You can tap that and you will see all the altitudes in the app uh, change to feet. Um, and um, that's, uh, that's basically it. So um, I'm gonna go back to metric for the moment. And, um, and you've got, you can export your flight logs after you finish. Um, we're gonna cover that in a separate video. But that's basically it. So once you've configured all the safety settings and you've also configured the mission settings, you're basically good to go. The only thing that, that sort of you need to bear in mind is that um, positioning this mission is quite critical in getting good data and also ensuring safety. So therefore we would highly recommend for that is to go to the center of the tower and um, use the video view which, uh, which, uh, which you can trigger from this button here. Um, and you tap on the small mini window and that will, that will allow you to go into the video view. At the moment, we don't have a drone connected, so we don't see a video feed, but you'll see a video feed when you connect the drone. And once you are bang in the center of the tower, you'd press, if you press the back right button on the, on the controller with the tower mapping selected, that will allow you to generate uh, this, you allow you to generate this mission. Um, and then so on and so forth, you can measure the height of the height of the, of the tower and you can tap that little by by positioning the drone, uh, aligning the drone with the the topmost point of the tower. And if you tap that button there, that's going to fetch the drone's current altitude. And if you lower the drone all the way to the ground, um, if you tap that button there, that's going to fetch the altitude. Um, and the same on so on and so forth. If you position the drone all the way to the edge of the tower, that's going to um, capture the the radius of the of the tower. Um, so, and you can do the same thing with the flight radius. So these are essentially safety settings, which will be recalculated, sorry, which will be recalculated, uh, which will be taken into account uh, when, when, we, when the speed is calculated and, 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 the, and the, the camera is triggered. So, so that's, that's basically it. Um, that's all you need to know for a tower mapping mission. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and play that mission one more time. Um, so, You've got the drone. Uh, what we're going to do this time is actually we're going to go ahead and change the mission to a circles mode, so that it actually goes around the tower and then reduces height. So you wouldn't typically do that for this kind of a tower. You would do it for a tower tower that's wider than it is taller. Uh, but it's just a demonstration at this point. So we would. By the way, the green rectangle is just an indication of the field of view of the camera, um, and that will obviously become bigger as the drone gains height. So. That's essentially it. As you can see over here, the drone is flying in a circle first at the same altitude around the tower. And if I use the simulation buttons over here to, sorry, if I use the simulation buttons over here, I can make that simulation go a lot faster. And what you will notice that the altitude uh, will decrease on every single, um, on every single complete circle. So it's at 33.7 meters at the moment, and it's going to complete another circle. Uh, you'll see the altitude drop very shortly um, to 32.8. So you can, you can see like about a meter shift every time the drone goes around the tower. Um, obviously this isn't the flight plan we would recommend for this type of a tower, but if you do encounter a tower that's wider than it's taller, then we would, would, would use a circles flight plan as opposed to a up and down flight plan. So that's basically it. Um, that's how you can configure a tower modeling mission. If you have any questions uh, related to 3D mapping and modeling, um, please let us know. We are just after this. We're going to post uh, uh, what, what the what the results might look like, um, and uh, please let us know if there are any questions. We are always here to help, and please send us any questions you might have at team at hammermissions.com. Um, thank you for listening, and we'll see you again. Mm -hmm.